in 2016, a Florida strip club stole $40,000 and got Seminole County police to blame it on a half-retarded female employee whom the manager took home and drugged. The tiny, sleazy strip club where tips are normally a dollar sold 40000 in dance coupons to two unnamed men using credit cards. They were supposed to get the cash from the bank the next day, but the other strip club managers said the money disappeared. After swearing they saw the video from inside the club, Altamont Springs police denied being able to access the video. Most of it was deleted. The strip club manager was seen jumping to his death. A boyfriend and girlfriend were later seen using his credit cards at Walmart. The girlfriend was a new employee at the strip club where the manager worked, but she seemed to know him already. What was she saying to you that night whenever you were talking to her? Um, I'm, I'm a flirt. Sure. And I like guys, but I like girls too. And I thought she was super cute. She was petite. She had a red dress on. And the first conversation was in the girls' dressing room. She was changing her dress. She had a blue dress on. And I'm like, what happened to the red one? You look so nice. And um, she was like, Jen told me to change. So as soon as she told me that, Jim had came to the back and was like, go ahead, put that red one back on. It's better than the blue one. And then that was our uh, words of exchange then. And then that was it. At the end of the night, I went to change, and I had let her borrow a bottom. And you just wrote your statement that it was out of the ordinary for, for someone to come in after 10.30 and then start working. Um, is that something you had, Jim had implemented? Like, how, like, why would that be out of the ordinary? Um, well, he, he started doing it, first of all, um, because the entertainers, they're just, they're a breed of their own. Sure. You know, not, not, not saying that in a disrespectful way, they're just a different breed of people. Sure. And um, getting to work on time and things like that is not really important to them. So if he cut off the time that they come to work, you know, in hopes of getting more girls there earlier, pretty much was it. So if anyone else was allowed to go to work after 10.30, it was kind of being disrespectful to the ones who were... Who got there earlier, man. Yeah, who were doing what they were supposed to do. And it, it's been that way in the business. Like, I was telling him, I've managed in this business on and off since 98. Oh, wow. All over Orlando. And it's just one of the normal things to, to do as a manager, you know, to try to get entertainers there. So so that night with her, um, what was different about her? Like, she came, what time did she come in? I don't remember exactly what time she came in. I just know she hit the floor late. Later than normal. I'm going to say 11, 30, 12. Okay. Roughly. Yeah, you were yeah, there was a question in the back of my head. Well, why is he letting this girl go? And, you know. Sure. It's like an hour, hour and a half past the cutoff time. Hmm. Um, you remember where she went after uh, you guys were closed? Mm -hmm. Okay. I know he walked her out to her car or to wherever she went to. And then he came back in. So he walked her out to the car. Which is not, you know, he... You know, her takes care of the girls, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And, and like, that particular night, I was walking the girls out, but it wasn't nothing for him to, like, come along and say, here, I'll walk her out. Yeah. Just, you know, it, it was nothing out of the normal. Okay. But I know he was frustrated, aggravated, I guess, because of a lot of paperwork and stuff that he was doing in the office after work <clears throat> because of the guy that came in and spent all the money. Mm -hmm. So he had a lot of paperwork to do, and he always hated that. So the drunk girls that were hanging out afterwards, waiting on rides or whatever, were getting on his nerves. Okay. So, so I got this straight. So if it's so a couple guys came in and spent a bunch of money that night. Mm -hmm. There'd be a lot of paperwork that would accompany that. That would accompany that. Usually. What do you mean? Like if they spend a bunch of money, so he stays up after and does like does paperwork and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I had Because you, you weren't thinking she was doing something wrong. Like she's just another girl, you know. Like you know. I knew there was a reason. I didn't know if it was the uh, because maybe we were short of girls. Maybe because that guy was there spending money and he wanted you know just the more the merrier. Yeah. yeah. But um, I, that's the, you know that that came in the back of my mind. I wondered why, and then I didn't I didn't ask him or nothing. You know, I, I didn't question what he did. Well, all right, you, you put in there that um that she was loud. She came on late. Mm -hmm. Um, 
came out during the dance late, later than normal. Okay, that's pretty much what I got. They let her work late. Okay. So just just in a recap, twenty third or the thirteenth the day before, this girl comes in later than normal, gets gets to dance later. Um, it's kind of a disrespectful thing because you know the dancers get there earlier, they get their chance to dance, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but but Jim, what does Jim make those decisions for? Yeah. Okay, so Jim make those decisions. Yeah. Okay, so she gets on there and dances. Um, you know, obviously, you're not thinking she's gonna go out and kill this guy. So you're not thinking anything about it. You're not right. just, you know, just dance her. The thought popped in my head: Why is she working so late? And then that's it. You know, just... Yeah. Why is she working so late? According to police. The boyfriend and girlfriend arrived at the manager's apartment together, and the boyfriend texted the girlfriend inside the manager's apartment. But there is not actually a video of the boyfriend texting. The boyfriend did not even have a phone, and the girlfriend had no communications of any kind. The boyfriend and girlfriend were never together on video. The cop who said the girlfriend and boyfriend arrived at the same time erased the video timestamps. There is a cigarette butt on the ground when the boyfriend arrives that is not there immediately before and after, supposedly, when the strip club manager meets the girlfriend at the curb. The cigarette butt on the ground, dog walkers in the garage and at the freight door, and other evidence suggests it was after 6 a.m. when the boyfriend arrived, not 4.53, as claimed by police. The girlfriend was drugged against her will by the strip club manager and did not realize how long she was there when her boyfriend came looking for her. When she told her lawyers the boyfriend did not arrive with her, her lawyers, who were friends with the cops and took a bribe from the guy the boyfriend was really with, said she was the one lying. They let a dangerous felon out of prison as a reward for lying that the boyfriend hid in the back of the girlfriend's car. But there is no time or space or reason for the boyfriend to hide in the back of the car. Police video claimed the boyfriend arrived separately from the car and the manager sat in the car. The lawyer of the guy the boyfriend was actually with, the manager's drug dealer, got his other client out of prison by lying that the boyfriend was with the girlfriend. Police said the boyfriend came into the apartment at 5.24 a.m. and fled sirens at 6.43 a.m., 79 minutes later. They let a dangerous felon out of prison for swearing the boyfriend and girlfriend spent that 79 minutes ransacking the apartment. 
But after 79 minutes, nothing in the apartment is searched or disturbed. And there are many valuables not taken. Drugs, cash, two iPhones, and an iPad in plain sight. The timestamps claimed by police are seven minutes later than what the gate and door swipes and T-Mobile and AT&T phone records say. The girlfriend ran out seven minutes earlier at 6.36 and was not there during and after the strip club manager went over the balcony at 6.37, as claimed at trial. Video of the boyfriend looking for Mandy's car and propping open the door to enter the murder was missing for two years. Video of him leaving is still missing to make you think he left with Mandy. The original video clips are missing. Police took the security video hard drive from the apartment complex and new video clips with no timestamps were created on December 21st, 2016. The times for when the girlfriend supposedly distracted the manager in the garage so the boyfriend could sneak in kept changing in different police reports. This was later revealed to be two clips edited together. I found a dog walker in the garage with the girlfriend and the manager in a piece of video that was never given to the defense. This was edited out of the two separate clips that were joined together. Not at all. 
when I called to ask the apartment manager who the dog walker was in the missing garage video, she got defensive and told me I want justice and called the police. When I asked the state attorney for the missing garage video, employee Crystal Martin lied that it had state surveillance secrets that they could not show me. Right before trial, the police put new timestamps on the video. This video was not disclosed to the defense before Scott Love's trial. They lied to the jury that these were the original video timestamps captured two years earlier. The police reports and notes all said the boyfriend got in because of a broken latch. But when I went to check, the security guard said the latch was not broken. Two years later, the undisclosed video suddenly showed it was a dog walker who let the supposed murderer into the building, not a broken latch. Even though the dog walker would have seen the murderers arrive and let them in the building, he could also tell you what time he walked his dogs and that Love did not arrive with Jackson, but long after. I will pay you $1,000 for the name of the dog walker who let Love into the building. Mandy Jackson is serving life without parole from age 21 for a strip club stealing $40,000 and cops faking evidence to blame it on two brain-damaged idiots. To see all the evidence I talked about and how all this and much more was faked in full detail, visit SeminoleScam.com.